So the San Antonio Spurs are trading Jakob Pertl to the Raptors for Cam Birch, a 2024 first-round pick, and a couple second-rounders. And for the Spurs, this is a W. We knew they were looking to get rid of him. We know the Spurs are in tank mode. Nothing to blow your meat about this for the Spurs. Nothing to blow you away. But for the Raptors, this is interesting. Very, very intriguing. Because the kind of scuttlebutt around the Raptors had been, oh, they're blowing it up. They are put it going bombs away. OG's gonna be out of there. Don't be surprised if Pascal's out of there. They don't seem to like each other, Toronto. Torch it. And my takeaway had been, why? But why? And I forgot to mention Fred Van Vliet, like we'd be traded, or people been saying he's gonna get traded. But my takeaway's been, why do you have to blow it up? Why? I mean, they're still young. There's teams like the Wizards where it's you got, you know, Bradley Beal in his 30s, Kuzma, Porzingis. They're all basically playing the top of their game, and they're still not even in the playing game. But you look at the Raptors, Scotty Barnes in year two. OG still just 25. Why not just retool and just maybe make a couple, a uh, couple of those changes and actually get a center? My season preview for the Raptors, I talked about how they need a center, and those Raptors fans talk about, no, he just drafted. Uh, what's his name? Coloco! Well, girl, we're good! You don't know what you're talking about! Centers take a while to develop. Maybe Coloco will be something, but he's not anything now. Y'all were satisfied with Kem Birch, but now y'all bringing back Jakob Pertl. Full circle, it's a day about full circles. Not a day about half circles, not a day about squares, triangles, the, the shape of the day. Every day, as y'all know, there's a shape of every day, and today it's a full circle shape day because you got D'Lo drafted by the Lakers, making that full circle round right back to the Lakers, running it back, spinning that block again. And then you got Jakob Pertl starting off with the wraps, getting sent over to the Spurs, I believe, and throw in, thrown in on that Kawhi Leonard deal. And he's making his way back to the Raptors. And for the Raptors, you know they're not tanking. They're not blowing anything up. They're not looking to even take a step back, step back at least uh, moving forward into next year, because that's a 2024 first-round pick. If you were thinking you were going to stank, you're not giving that up for Jakob Bertel. No way. You're thinking that's going to be a low-round pick. So I'm very in intrigued to see what they do. I do feel like OG Ananobi will get traded, simply due to the fact that the like rumors and reports of what they would get back for him Seem like a lot for a guy that's not an all-star. If they could get like three firsts for him, I'm sorry. I don't know how you don't move him. I feel like OG Ananobi's become a touch overrated just because he's a guy that helps every team. But I don't think he necessarily helps as much as people are acting like. So for the Raptors, it's kind of like a TBD. A first round pick and a couple seconds for Jakob Pertl. You know, he's put up good numbers. has good touch around the rim. Good, uh, good interior defender. But I don't think he's like some great you know, star player. So it's a it's a it's a tad much, but it's not it's not a terrible price if he's like a missing piece to a team that's really about to do something. So I've got to wait to see at the deadline what other moves are made. Are y'all about to make something happen? Are the Raptors are about to, about to become a really interesting team? That's what I have to wait and see. For the Spurs, it's an automatic W. It's a solid player that you probably got his value up a little bit more than maybe he's actually worth. By being able to just get you know heavy minutes every single game on a team that's not very good, especially like with teams that are bad defensively, it almost like makes it makes centers look better than they are defensively. You know, you can look at like uh, this season with Nick Claxton, they don't really play perimeter defense in Brooklyn, and you know Joe Harris, Seth Curry, Kyrie Irving, just a lot of guards, not a tough perimeter defense. So when it's just a bunch of guys just playing Ole defense to the rim, the center at the rim is going to have a lot of shot. Uh, rear protecting opportunities, shot blocking opportunities. If that's their strength as a center, he can maybe look a little bit better than you actually are. I think we saw it with Rudy Gobert with the Jazz, with Bogdanovich and Joe Ingles on the wing, not really playing any defense, and it made him maybe look a little bit more of an elite rim protector than he actually was. So they got a good return for a guy that they probably got his value up a little bit more than he's actually worth. So it's a tad much to give up for the Raptors, but they've been needing a center. They finally got a real center right back in Toronto. We got to wait to see 
whether if it's whether it's worth it to see if they're able to build a real team that's competitive to actually make some noise in the East. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe too, please. Yes, sir.